We have in studio, we have Neri Mawako, uh, Dr. Sam Kamau, and Honorable Tindi Mwale, basically just to review the week. And on the headline of the standard this morning, we have the demolition squad, as it's being called, moving to 13 different counties. And um, I'll highlight some of those counties. We have Kiambu County, uh, we have Muranga, Nakuru, Meru, for various reasons. You have, for instance, Kiambu, commercial buildings and sand harvested along Thirika and Thika River are some of what is going to be targeted. You have as far as Garissa, uh, human settlement along Tana River, dump site along uh, Tana River. You've got uh, the likes of CIR farms on Yala Delta, water harvesting and vending business to um, the river. So this demolition, of course, has started and many Kenyans, like you mentioned, Dr. Kamau, uh, feel a certain uh, positive energy in the fight to corruption because this is just impunity. But one of the things that uh, is of concern is that we've seen demolitions done before. And the question is, if these buildings are on riparian land, that means there is a reason why there is a certain amount of uh, space that is allocated. So once the buildings have been brought down, are you confident that, first of all, they'll be brought down and then there'll be a cleaning of those res river reserves? Or are we just going to be left with eyesores? <laughs> I think that's a, that, that's a good question. Perhaps looking at the issue in a bigger way. Remember, what we are trying to cure right now, <clears throat> there are things that have been happening over time. Mm. And much of these may have happened under the previous county governments. First, it's a good, I mean, county councils. Um, it's a good thing that uh, the fight against uh, corruption or even this demolition is being devolved because it's happening also in the other um, counties. But I think demolition is just uh, the first part because right now if you go, if you go to Nakumat, UK, near where I work, eh, you just see the, you know, the stones. It, the it, it, it's a nice or like, uh, like you said. And therefore there has to be other measures to try and uh, protect or restore the environment. For example, the efforts that Mishuki initiated around mm -hmm. uh, Nairobi River, it was not just moving people away and the structures that were there, but it was also planting trees and, you know, putting a fence to try and make it um, look better. But it goes beyond that. Um, the need to correct the processes, the structures that are still in place that facilitate this kind of a thing. Because, again, what has been happening, especially <coughs> with Westlands, as many leases expire. There are people who are also targeting some of these properties. So it could be that we demolish one, but somebody else is an opportunity to come and again grab the same piece of land. So demolition is the first step. Restoration is another step. But we must also now take a step to ensure that the people have been facilitating this illegal acquisition. They are prosecuted and we are able to seal the loopholes. The other thing is the conflict in terms of how you define or, you know, the extent how much land should be spared or, you know, in terms of saying that you are encroaching on the river. Because uh, I think there is contradiction in the law. Some says that meters, another one says uh, 10 meters. So it's also important to harmonize mm -hmm. and clarify that so that in the future we are able to know exactly, you know, uh, that these uh, land sits, I, I mean, this, this space is uh, repairing land. The final thing, you will not, most likely you will not find any map uh, that depicts or highlights what you'd call repairing land. That map doesn't exist. And that is part of the problem because if you go to the county, Nairobi County government, for example, they would not show you and tell you that this is a, you know, this is a map of the riparian land. I think it is an issue of if we decide this is a riparian land, it is important that that is defined, that the demarcations are clear, that that information is available. But right now I tell you it will not it's be. Not in the uh, the uh, demolition of uh, the buildings is a good start because obviously we are assuming that we are heading towards the right direction in terms of reclaiming public land. However, the bigger issue that many might be concerned about is, first of all, how this was approved. Because for those buildings to come up, we do have agencies that have been tasked with uh, the responsibility of ensuring that, one, there is no encroachment, two, that those buildings are within the standards that are stipulated within the law. But this has happened in the full glare of those agencies. So as much as we're building the, uh, bringing the buildings down, there needs to be a lot more work done on the back office, if we can call it that, of the agencies that actually approve these buildings. That's very true. Uh, I think the main reason why we're having, having such uh, scenarios in Kenya is because of the corruption. Because these state agencies, the, the officers, be it a junior officer or a senior officer, all of them are corrupt. And that's why they end up being given money and then they approve buildings to be built where they're not supposed to be built. They even end up 
uh, giving titles to to rivers which is not supposed to be and therefore the the, the whole scenario is corruption is the culture that ukinipea uh, kitu kidogo i'll give you what you want mm. uh, but, but nevertheless uh, daktari said that uh, uh, the map of kenya does not show riparian the map of kenya shows riparian land and uh, both my two homes um, I've, I've built my two homes uh, near a river and when you go to the what we call uh, what we call the, there is the, the, there is the map that shows the the plots and everything mm. it will show you how many meters you are you're, you're supposed to in fact it's it's uh, how many meters from the middle of the river not from the the yeah. edge the bank yeah mm. if, from the middle of the river so sometimes they'll tell you it's 15 meters sometimes they'll tell you 30 meters depending on the on the size of the river if the river is too big, it goes to 30 meters. If the river is a, is a, is a, is a stream, mm -hmm. then it goes to around 15 meters. And therefore, the main problem is uh, the government will lose because according to the, the law, uh, the person who built the building is supposed to pay for the demolition. But you see this person has got genuine paperwork. And therefore, when he presents these genuine paperwork to, to the court, the, the court will will see that it's the government which made a mistake to approve this person. And 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 is I think is that not arguable that it's genuine paperwork because yes. if let me use an example if somebody stole uh, stole a car and sold it to you mm -hmm. and gave you a logbook the fact that it's a stolen car does yes. not I mean you lose that car either way so now how is it genuine paperwork when um, some of this land is evidently encroached on. And I think we need to draw a distinction. There could be those who have a genuine, uh, for instance, now maybe Taj Mahal. Part of it is on the road, part of it is not. So there's yes. part of the building that yes. could be on okay land. But there are those who've literally just encroached onto public land. You see, when, when we talk of genuine, the, the paperwork should be coming from the, the correct institution that is supposed to approve. Because if I bring a title deed that has got an original copy, in the Ministry of Lands, that's a genuine title deed. Uh -huh. Yeah, although it is the officials who made the title deed to be genuine. That's what I mean. In, in other words, I have a genuine title deed that of, is not... of, 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 of a road reserve. I have a genuine title yes. deed of a forest. Yes. I have a genuine title uh, deed of, uh, of the ocean because you saw people had also yes. yeah, built on the ocean. ocean. Yeah. But I wanted to maybe clarify the point that I made earlier. Of course, the maps of Kenya will show the rivers and, you know, the land and the rivers and all that. But I was saying, especially for Nairobi County, it is important that what is defined or considered to be riparian land, there should actually, that should be clear as spelled out. That is what, what I was what saying. What is saying, yes. if I buy a piece of land, it normally, once you get the, what is it called, the, the deed, uh, yes. the, the deed plan. Yes, the Once deed. you get the deed plan, <coughs> yeah. it shows you where the, where, where the road reserve is. Yes, where if exactly. there is a the river, it shows yes. you exactly where yes. it is. So the, the, constru the contractor yes. who is building yes. is doing it with full knowledge. Yeah, in, exactly. in fact, even the plans, you have to yes. submit them to the county government exactly. for them to approve. Eh? Mm -hmm. But yeah. you see what, times, uh, what happens at times is uh, you could uh, submit the architectural drawing mm -hmm. and it is approved without, for example, even when you're doing the, um, environmental impact, you know, assessment, assessment, that they don't necessarily come to the specific, you know, the physical location to see what you're doing. So you have a structure that you have, uh, you know, taken for approval. These people, because it is possible to influence, you know, even the person who is doing the assessment so that they can give approval. And that has been part of the problem. Now, the issue of guidelines, so that you know clearly, and like he is saying, that uh, whether it is what I was saying, 30 meters or 10 meters, that, that needs to be clarified. But as part of protecting uh, the riparian land and you know road reserves and all that this needs to be properly captured in documentation mm -hmm. so that the next time somebody is seeking approval to put up a structure near for example the south end a mall eh, you would actually it, it's very clear that even in the map it is captured that this is riparian and that is the information i'm saying has not been properly uh, given out. Like, given okay, out. let me come to you, Nerima. And I don't know if you've had the privilege of reading the book uh, Animal Farm. I love that book. You love that book. Yeah. So you've read it. And <laughs> the reason why I bring about uh, Shamba Lawanyama is uh, the phone call between wa two governors. We have uh, Waitito and Sonko. <laughs> and again, this is in the you know spirit of demolition and illegal structures. Uh, but I'm sure you've listened to the phone call. And here we are, you know, discussing buildings, and they're going to 
32, 13 other counties. But if the very top of those counties, this is how they operate in terms of you call me because we are friends and I'm going to release your people. And I mean, does that leave you worried as a Kenyan that even what the president, this is literally uh, throwing eggs in the face of the president in terms of what he's trying to do? Absolutely. First of all, as you were reading the different counties and the different buildings and all that, the first thing I thought was there's a lot of land grabbing going on to the point where it's quite out of control. And not only that, secondly, we're seeing a lot of politicians involved. And that's concerning because when you have people who are in authority, who are the ones who are even putting those building up, buildings up, is worrying. And then another thing is the kind of conversation that they were having to where you can actually negotiate somebody's release and and even come up with come the up with a figure money, the and, figure, the, and you're like what is this what law is this and that brings us back to george orwell's animal farm where some are more equal than others Precisely. where some do not quite fall under the law and below it there are some who are above it and as we speak right now, that particular building, which is supposed to be demolished, has not been demolished. It's still standing. And so it makes you wonder how, one, we are going to fight this war on corruption and impunity and grabbing, and how is it going to end? Because as much as we're talking about following guidelines, I believe guidelines are there. What people are doing is not following them. Mm. And, and that's the issue that we're not quite facing because people know particular buildings are not supposed to have certain floors without lifts. But you will find those buildings there, especially near Taj Mahal. People know that there are certain buildings that shouldn't have gone up, even constructions like Solai Dam. People know that people went and approved it. An, an architect actually built that knowing it was not safe. So when people's humanity, when people lose humanity and put people in the face of danger because of greed and wealth, then we should be concerned as a people. But it's even more worrying when those who lead us seem to be as confused as you can even imagine to where they're recording conversations where even me as a young person, I would not even speak like that or do things like that. And so, and of course, the, the question still remains as to, as to why, uh, whoever recorded that call, why they would record and release it still remains a mystery. Uh, but maybe, like somebody was arguing earlier on, that the name written there is Waititi and not Waitito. Maybe that's going to be the escape, and you have no proof that that is actually Mike So well, but we'll wait and see. I mean, this is Kenya. Uh, Moshimiwa. Yeah, I think, first of all, the governor of Nairobi over blue everything you know uh, building a, a having a kind of having a construction site without a permit that it's not a criminal offense it's until, a civil offense how is it not a criminal yeah, offense it's a, you've built it's, until the eighth floor without a permit just a minute i'm talking uh, concerning my Tito's wife because okay. for her she was just, she, she was arrested because she's having a site She's building without approvals. Mm -hmm. And you see, that one is not a criminal offense. That's a civil offense. What he would have done is to stop the construction and then go to court. But you see, he overblew everything. He went and uncuffed the lady, and then he brought the lady to the basement cell and started uh, humiliating, calling IT to telling him, you are not supporting demolition, so even your wife is in. And then secondly, I think when you say that uh, you are surprised with that conversation, uh, Michael, you are not being sincere because that's the Kenyan culture. Kenyan culture, even when your person is uh, in a police cell, people call. They want it's to help. Who you know. Yes, it's and who you know. Especially when it's on, I mean, not too long ago he had called exactly. the president when, uh, you know, those Yes, here in Mombasa Road, yes. Mm. Yeah. And therefore, I think uh, what, what uh, Sonko did wrong is to is to record the conversation because as a fellow governor you should have given it to some small respect and then secondly you should what have are you, are you what are you saying Mwishimu? are you saying that there was nothing wrong with the call per se in terms of its no, content no, no, no. but now the issue is that no, we no. got to hear it no 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 i'm not saying that the, the, there was nothing wrong you see number one you would have uh, even even if it to called and he was pleading you would have advised it to accordingly you would have told him what you do is you go and look for the approvals mm. number one then number two if you want your, your wife to be helped, then you need to follow the correct procedure, mm. yes. But the issue of him recording then is trying to show people that you see what it is against demolition, but is now the one pleading. I think as, uh, as comrades, mm. yeah, as politicians, and, that and, one and of course, made a mistake. That also begs the question from me, and this is just what I wonder. When you leaders meet, what do you guys talk about? 
Because I, <laughs> do, you, do you ever sit down and address some of these issues as leaders and say, look, Sonko, what are you doing? Because, I mean, we can sit here and debate, but when you sit down as leader, do you actually sit down and correct one another? Yeah, we sit down and correct each other. Even me, Sonko, is my friend. There are times we hang out together out and we talk and... He's a sober guy, so I'm I'm, so I'm even I, I'm I, even surprised I'm not why. Sure many Kenyans <laughs> like with you, Mashimiwa, talking about him being sober, and you know there's also the saying, "Show me your friends, and I'll tell you who you are." So I'm not sure you want to associate with him right now. Uh, but uh, Dr. Kamau, um, your thoughts in terms of uh, just the content yeah. of that particular phone call, mm -hmm. and not because it's Sonko or Waitito, but yeah. the fact that if this is how mm -hmm. our county governments are run, and maybe even government, because when he talks about orders from a Above. Mm -hmm. You and I would be left, you know, just to fill in that blank, <laughs> that order it. that order from above. Maybe yeah. it's the same order that he called the time when uh, there was a demolition of Mombasa Road, uh -huh. and uh, it was stopped. <laughs> yeah, now first, and I partly agree with Mweshimua that this issue may have been blown out of uh, proportion, because the issue here, you remember Waitito had made some comments the previous day, mm. uh, or I mean weekend, around, uh, you know, moving rivers. Yeah, yeah. moving rivers. Eh? <laughs> 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 which again uh, was trending all over and people are making jokes around that. Eh? But then uh, this issue, it was not about, you know, the building being on uh, repair and land or, you know, on road reserve. It was an issue of extending, you know, a building without the necessary uh, approval or permit. And of course now one of them is uh, there's the ethical issue in terms of uh, recording a conversation and, uh, you know, displaying, even exposing someone's private number the other person. without knowledge of the other person. That's an issue. But I agree with you to address now the specific point in terms of the conversation among it. Of course, you know, and remember what we are talking about when we talk about the big properties, Taj Mall, and, uh, you know, and, and the other, you know, big properties that have been mentioned, we start now thinking about the big people, the powerful people who own these, and when it involves uh, just a poor person, then it's easy to go and demolish. So, in that sense, then, it would almost indicate that, uh, you know, there is a law for the rich and, uh, and the powerful and another law for the poor. But the fight against corruption, one of the things that we want to see as a country is equalization. Remember, we keep talking about the big fish and the small fish. Mm. When we see that the efforts that have been put in place are targeting everybody, and that is what the president said on Sunday, no matter how powerful you are, you must submit to the same law, to the same procedure, and the same processes that every person, because we are supposed to be equal under the law. So the sense that comes out of this uh, conversation between the two governors is that I'm able to influence, uh, I see, I'm able to call in a favor, I'm able to make certain decisions because, you know, I can simply order somebody to just release, you know, mm. this, this person. But what we want to see in the fight against corruption, in the fight against impunity, is that we are all equal under the law and everybody will submit to the provisions of the law and will have to follow the lay down procedures. You will not get favor simply because you, are a, you hold a powerful political office or you will not get favors because you know powerful people who sit in powerful offices. Okay, Nerima, and now we are on the fight on corruption and your comments and just thoughts on the momentum that we have as a country. We've had uh, a number of leaders arrested and taken to court. We recently had the former governor of Nairobi, Evans Skidero, arraigned before court. We have the NLC chair, that's uh, Mohamud Sozuri, also brought before court. The momentum that we've taken as a country, but that cannot stop a yeah. momentum because then we'll not have solved the problem. What would you like to see happen next as this is happening? I, I believe we've lived in a time where we've seen high profile politicians actually either stepping aside or moving. We can talk about Mwaikibaki. That happened, where there was a crazy reshuffle and people thought that corruption was really being fought and then it died down. So I think what we need to see is actual conviction, actual court cases going through and actual charges. As soon as we begin to see that, then perhaps with that political goodwill continuing, mm -hmm. then we could say that we are making progressive changes. Progress. Mm -hmm. But as long as we continue naming people and then we don't have evidence, lack of evidence, not enough evidence, then we'll continue to have the same problem which is systemic. Mm. And we need to be concerned about now our institutions because if we cannot have a way for people to feel that due to corruption there are consequences, if there's no fear and people feel they're above the law, then as a country when a <laughs> we're in big problems. We're in big problems. Yes. And Mweshimiwa, the other thing, of course, is uh, we've always been told that corruption 
would only be dealt with if it's dealt with from the top. But this needs to percolate down to every morning. Because let's face it, as a society, we have a culture of uh, kitukidoga. I mean, right now, if you went and parked in town, even if you found a free parking, uh, you'll find somebody who will come and <coughs> help you park, as it were, uh, and he'll expect something at the end of the day. Not because he has done anything, but it's just a culture that we have. But how do we now make sure that this does not just end up in just convictions of the big fish, but it percolates down to where we change our mind frame? Mm -hmm. I think uh, before before I answer that one, I, I wanted to contribute to what you had asked her. Okay. You see, uh, if you take someone to court, now the evidence is the one that will either convict, convict them or, them or free them. Yes. Mm -hmm. And therefore, the DPP needs to hire very smart, intelligent lawyers so that he can pray, he give his good evidence and support the evidence and and win the cases. Because at the end of the day, if you tell someone, if you take uh, somebody big in court and he has billions of money, he will hire a very smart lawyer. He can even hire a lawyer from outside. Mm -hmm. And that lawyer will be able to argue very well, present documents in an orderly way, and he will convince the judge or the court that this guy is free when he actually is not free. And therefore, uh, taking people to court is good. But you see what happens behind the court now. Now, after we have seen Kidero went to court, now after that, what happened? now it's the paperwork, the arguments, the evidence, the, uh, yeah. So if the DPP does not have the lawyers who can really match those that Kidero will hire, because I'm very sure he'll hire very smart lawyers, yeah, then you'll find again he'll walk out free. Mm -hmm. And then the second issue you have asked is... Uh, How we make it percolate down yes, to... The yes, to the common person. I think we need to come up with a with, a, I don't know, a task force or something which can advise the government on how to, to engage the public mm -hmm. or sensitize the public to know that corruption is a vice and therefore it's supposed to be dealt with. Because uh, if you go for the big fish and you know the small fish are also practicing, mm -hmm. the small fish will become big because it's still growing. 